Awesome. So what do I need? I need a program of some sort, or I at least need my shell. So um, that means I have to move everything around. So I'll move my chat over here. And I'll minimize this a little bit. Put that over here. <clears throat> and then I need a program. Well, no, you know what? I just need the shell. So let me share my screen and I'll do that. Okay, so there we are. So I just have my Python shell. And basically the Python shell is um, nice for examples, right? We can always test a line of code. We can test a couple of line of codes uh, uh, of code and see what's happening. Um, now, last time we talked about variables, and I want to make sure that we know what a variable is. We talked about our gasoline kind of program to figure out the trip cost. Remember, and um, I haven't posted those two videos yet. I'm going to post those today. They take hours to, to convert. Um, and I meant to do it yesterday, but <clears throat> I wasn't feeling as great as I, as I was the day before. So I kind of slept a lot. Um, but I will post those today. Um, so having said that, let's talk about um, variables first. Because variables can be a little bit tricky. So, uh, does anybody remember what a variable is? A name, okay. It is a name, we name something, right? A name for a value. Angelina's playing, what about everybody else? It could mean anything. Well, it, it does have a definition. It, 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 it can't. It represents an unknown value. Yes. It's a placeholder in memory. That's excellent. Uh, it's a substitute for an unknown value. So basically, we're getting there. See, I knew together we could do it. Um, if you don't have the chat up. Um, nobody wants to talk to me at nine o'clock in the morning, so um, uh, everybody wants to type something. <laughs> I think that's a function of society nowadays. I think because we're all so used to doing uh, text messages on our phones all the time. It is less, well, I don't know, is it less personal? Or what is, what is the... Yes, but what is the what is the thing that it, what makes it easier for you guys to type and not say anything? <laughs> I think you feel less responsible for your words. Like you're not as tied to it if you type it than if you say it. Okay, well, I guess because if you say something, um, I know I'm off track, but whatever. Um, Yeah, okay, so your family's at home and you don't want to bother them. Um, yeah, no, it's, it, it's probably part of that is that there's a lot of background noise a lot of times. Um, it, 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 um, when you type, you have to think a little bit. Um, it, it, with the coronavirus, everybody's home, nobody goes anywhere. The, um, so a lot of times that there's noise. Well, I say ums and ahs a lot too, unfortunately. Uh, I don't think I do it as much live as, as I do when I'm talking to this computer. <clears throat> I think we've just become really comfortable sending text messages. 
Um, I think it just takes less effort. And we're kind of used to it as a society, at least where we live. Again, when I, when I make generalizations, I'm, I'm making generalizations only about, you know, my area, not just this room, but, you know, Southern California, because that's what I'd really know. Um, <clears throat> so I think what's happened is that when we have a phone and we, we text most of the time if we want to communicate with somebody, I think, and I'm kind of, how do I put this? I'm not like mean. I am kind of. But um, <laughs> what I think is that um, we like the shortness of typing a text. It takes less effort than actually calling somebody. Because you know that you can use your phone to call people and talk to them, right? Um, <laughs> I know we're always doing this. Uh, but you can actually, you know, do, hey, how are you? Uh, but when you do that, you have to kind of mentally prepare yourself to have a conversation with somebody. Because we say something like, um, yeah, that's a great idea. Or could you um, get some milk? Can you come by later? Right? We send these little short texts. Um, are you at home? And what ends up happening, I guess, is that then we are, that's it, that we're done, right? We don't have to have a whole conversation about whatever the other person wants to talk about. Um, so if you call somebody on the phone, you have to be prepared for them to have other things that they might want to talk to you about. And, you know, it might be nine o'clock in the morning and we might be like, oh, crap, I don't want to, I don't want to have this lengthy conversation. So it's easier just to send a text because there's less involvement. And I say, and I think, and I honestly think this, um, that for most of us, again, I'm making a generalization, but I think we're kind of lazy. And, you know, most of the time we don't want to have a we don't want to talk to somebody who might have problems or other things that they want to talk. We just want to go, okay, Hey, are you home later today? You know, done. <clears throat> uh, are you going, are you going to the party tonight, the COVID party tonight that we're not supposed to? Um, and then you get an answer. Yes, no, done. And then we're kind of done. We don't have to, you know, talk to somebody for 20 minutes. In, uh, in a business environment, there's an extremely pragmatic use for texting when you're contacting people. I can't see what you're actually doing at the time. You could be in a meeting, you mm -hmm. could have your hands full of lab equipment, you could be around several other people explaining things or whatever. By texting you first, before I make the phone call, are yeah. you available for a phone call? or I'm going to be in, in building two at 1030. Can you meet me there? Yes. Texting is critical in a business environment. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know what we used to do. Um, <laughs> you know, we used to just call people. Well, people didn't have cell phones. What did we do when somebody didn't have a cell phone? You know, you'd call their phone and leave a message um, and we'd have pagers. Um, so, <laughs> you know, now, being able to contact somebody wherever they are basically is such a yeah, fax a fax machine <laughs> um although people do still send faxes um or they send email attachment kind of things <coughs> which is easier but being in that kind of an environment uh, and being able to contact people wherever they are at whatever time, whether they're on a job site or whether they're in their office or whether they're somewhere else is a huge advantage. I know that we used to send letters and that used to be a, a big pain in my butt because I'd have to, my, my grandmother, um, my mom was from Germany. So my, that side of the family, I'd have to send letters to them um, and write letters. And it was always, it always seemed like 
I had to come up with something to fill a page or two because otherwise it didn't make sense to send the letter. You know, you can't write a letter and just write three lines of stuff. So it was always kind of a big deal. Um, so, <clears throat> and then it takes, it takes a long time to get a response, you know, so in Germany, it would take like, you know, six days to get there. And then it'd take a couple days for my, my now my, for some reason, my grandmother could always write like a letter, but that's because she was from the previous generation, I guess. Um, and then by the time it got back, you know, it'd be like two weeks. Um, so you're having this very kind of disjointed conversation. Um, but <clears throat> I think we just got used to, to doing short little texts. And it makes, <laughs> dear grandma, thanks. Yeah, um, grandma won't be happy. Send a damn, tell me stuff, tell me things. And we want to, we want to please others. But, but texting, I think, is kind of a selfish thing. So uh, I don't know what the hell I was talking about in, in uh, uh, Python. Oh, we were going to do formatting characters. So um, I wanted to tell you how to, well, let's just do it here. Let's just do format. Format is, oh, well, we were talking about variables. See, I got all sidetracked. So a variable is a memory spot that we reserve in order to hold data. So typically that means, um, like, I, I need to keep track of somebody's name or whatever they input. So as far as a string goes, we can do that. Uh, a lot of times it's to hold values. And in my example, it was all about um, trying to find the trip cost of something. Uh, so <clears throat> I would have variables uh, that hold the user input. And remember that you also need variables to hold calculated values. So I think for um, the trip cost program, uh, what was our calculated value? Well, we had two, right? We had the actual trip cost, which was the whole point of the program that we calculated. And then we had gallons used, I think, was a calculated value. So we need memory spots so that the computer can remember those values. We have a place to put them. Now, the reason we call them variables is because we don't know what the value is going to be. So we had uh, memory spots created for the user input. What was it? Miles per gallon, distance traveled, cost per gallon, right? Those were the three pieces of user input. Again, we created a variable for each one of those, or we initialized a variable. And the reason was, the reason it's a variable is because I don't know what the user input is gonna be, right? Is the cost per gallon gonna be, you know, 229 or 319 or uh, 258, right? I don't know exactly what the user input is gonna be. What's the distance traveled? I don't know. As the programmer, I can't predict what the values are going to be. But I do know that I need that value for the program to do what it's supposed to do. And I know that that value has to be stored somewhere. So what we do is we create our variables and then we do a, what we call a value assignment. And the value assignment comes from uh, user input. Right? So we're assigning values to the variables. We're, we're populating them. <coughs> and then we can start doing our calculations. And when we do some calculations, we come up with calculated values that were not user input. Those also need to be stored <coughs> in memory spots. So uh, we should have... Uh, created a variable for those. And then we display our results back onto the, you know, the screen so that we can see whatever it is that, that the answer is. And <clears throat> we, 
we we're basically grabbing the things from our variable, our memory spots. So the things that we need, and sometimes we, you know, display one thing, sometimes we'll display multiple things. Um, I have a program that we can look at. Well, no, uh, let's, let's not. Let's, uh, let's just talk about it in <coughs> theory for right this very second. So when we create a variable, remember that we have to define the data type that's going to be used or that it's going to be able to use. And what did we have? We had the integer data type, int int, and we had the decimal data type, which is called a float. Now we also have strings and, and other kinds of, of uh, data types that we can use. But um, now, so let's talk about data types and formatting. Well, let's talk about formatting our, when we're displaying stuff. So we can format our output. So we can format things and we use the format function. Recording, so if it starts messing you up, let me know. Sure. Um, so we can use that. So let's, let's try that. We'll do a format and notice how um, it turns purple. And usually when we um, use a function, we, we use parentheses to put whatever it is that we want to do inside of that parentheses. So basically now I'm defining what it is that I want to format and how I want it to format. <clears throat> so if I do 12 divided by 5, I'm going to get a, well, let's, I'm going to get what am I going to get if I do here? Let me do this. Oh, damn it. Um, let me, um, let me do this. Okay. So if I just did 12 divided by five, I would get 2.4. So now I'm going to actually format this. <clears throat> so let's say that um, I needed to display dollars and cents and in with dollars and cents, that is not the correct way to display it, right? $2.4 is not something that we normally see or say. <clears throat> so we, <laughs> Patrick made me laugh. Um, <clears throat> we would say $2.40, right? So uh, I, if I wanna display this and show that extra decimal place, so four zero instead of just four, <clears throat> I would do this. And by the way, I don't have to actually do the math here. I could have a variable right here. So I could have the name of the variable. So trip cost, comma. Oh, comma. I can't see my damn keyboard. There we are. <clears throat> and then uh, I can format this. So let's do two decimal places. Let's see. Um, so when I do that, I have to do a quote and then I want to do period two F end quote end parentheses enter. Ah, and what did I get? I got 2.40. What does the two F stand for? Uh, it, F is float. Float, okay. Okay, so it's, and it's two decimal places basically is what it stands for. So if I, if I did, uh, you know, 4F, it would show, you know, 4000. Zero, I just want to see something. Yeah, it's invalid if I don't have the quotation marks around it. <clears throat> so let's do a uh, let's do one that has um, more. So let's do uh, four. What the hell? Right. So basically, I'm just saying, hey, display this many. Uh, by the way, if I have a value that's going to have a lot of decimal places like this one. Um, and I'll do 5-7. And I do the 2F, 
it's going to round. <clears throat> so this is another reason. Um, a lot of times we don't want, you know, 12 decimal places or however many decimal places that our, our, our variable is going to have. <clears throat> so if I do, um, let's say that I create a variable called tax and I'm not going to define it. Okay, so I'm not going to define the data type and I'll put in it that. So I'm doing a value assignment. So now tax, by the way, when uh, the name that you give a variable um, is case sensitive. So you have to type it the same way if you want to recall whatever value is in the variable. So be careful with, with, with that. And then we're going to, I'm just going to print it. So I'm going to print and, um, We'll do that space and maybe a dollar sign here and then comma. And then I'm going to, what am I going to do? Oh, so let's say that I want to do uh, calculate the tax of something. And I should put parentheses around that. So I want to do that first, and then I want to multiply it by whatever the price was. So let's just say uh, okay. So what's that going to do? It's going to add one to the. And I did this a little bit incorrectly because there should be a space between operators. Uh, it doesn't matter; it'll still work, but there should be a space. Um, having said that, um, what does this do? Why am I doing that? So look at this, tax is 8%, right? 0 0.08. And why am I doing this right here before I do my multiplication? Because you want that done first. <laughs> Yeah, but why am I doing it first? Go ahead, Patrick. My key doesn't, my space bar doesn't work on this particular computer. <coughs> um, for okay. Um, if you don't do that, if you don't do that, you're going to get a fraction of, what you're going to get is the tax, not the total of the tax. You're only going to get a fraction of 12.99. By putting the one there, you get the new value, including the tax. So, then that's exactly correct. <clears throat> so if I did tax times 12.99, and what is tax? Tax is equal to 0 0.08, right? I'm going to come up with 8% of 1299. So that would be the amount, the dollar amount of the tax. So if somebody says, well, how much tax is there on 1299, right? Then I would do this calculation. And it, I'll say it's, I don't know what it would be, 8% um, of uh, it's 13. So 10% would be $1.30. So um, it's a dollar ten something or other, right? So it, it's around a dollar, somewhere between a dollar and a dollar ten. And I would say, well, a dollar and three cents is the amount of tax that you would have to pay for $12.99. But that's not what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to. Twelve ninety nine plus the tax. So how much is twelve ninety nine with tax included, right? How much is the actual cost? And so, if I do plus one here, then this becomes 
1.08. And then when I multiply that, I get 1299, right? Because if I multiply 1299 times one, I get itself. So I get $12.99. But then I'm also multiplying it by that. So it's going to add basically um, whatever the tax amount is. It's going to calculate how much tax there is, but I'm multiplying it. And because I'm using this one here, it's going to add it to the 1299. So I should get a result um, that makes sense or that is what I want. So we would do a different calculation or we would formulate this differently depending on what it is that I want. And you can see here, I'm trying to get my cost, my total cost, I guess. And um, there you go. So I'll go ahead and press enter. Oh, damn it. What did I do? Um, I think you have an extra end parenthesis. No, I don't. I shouldn't. What it's saying? Well, it is saying that it's unmatched, yes. But it should be matched right here. Yeah, but the one that, that's on the inside of the two, this, like right after 12, no, the one like right after 1299, what is that parenthesis? Doing? Oh, I have, you were right. I do have two and I shouldn't have two. Um, you are correct. Okay, so that gives, and I didn't do that on purpose. Uh, that gives me a place to show you that you do have to be careful about how many parentheses that you've opened and how many that you've closed. And I'm used to doing, having things that look like this, right? So we have an opening parentheses and then another opening parentheses and then another one or and so I would have to close both of them at the end. But this matches. So I have this, these two parentheses go together. And those two parentheses, opening and closing parentheses, go together. So let's do it now. Oh, damn it. Yeah, I have to do this first. So I have to do my value assignment first. So I have to do tax equals before I can copy and paste. Because I have to press the enter key. Now I should be able to copy and paste this bit and press enter. Ah, good. I got a result. Okay. Now your cost dollar sign $14 and two nine two zero 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 one cents which is again not how we would normally we would display dollars and cents and <clears throat> python is going to show us or do very exact calculations so what i'm going to do is i'm going to format this to only show two decimal places Okay, I got to do that one manually. And then I can do my paste here. And I can get back into my parentheses. And I can go ahead and format this. So I'm going to say, um, comma. I have glare. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just do the 2F. So um, point 2F. Enter. What did I do wrong? Do we have to include like a format operator? Or? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I see I did it wrong. That's because I'm, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, I forgot the format operator. So what is it that I want to format? Well, I want to format the result of all of this the product. So my format operator goes there. And here is where I have to add parentheses. And the reason is 
format, whatever it is I want to format, is in parentheses. Okay. Oh, and I need to add the comma here. So I need to actually do this correctly. I don't want to get ahead of myself. 2F. Good. Okay. So now this, when I press enter, this should work. <clears throat> so the first set of, of, of parentheses here, the outside ones, that holds whatever it is I want to format. And because I want to do this addition first, I have these kind of nested parentheses. This is actually a mathematical set of parentheses, an arithmetic set of parentheses, um, <clears throat> because it's saying do the addition first, right, before I do the multiplication. So now I should get a result. So see, here it's displaying only two decimal places. And it's fourteen dollars and three cents. It has rounded. So it was fourteen point zero two nine. So that goes to three cents. So here is a, a great example of why we would format some output, uh, because this is not how. Oops, I'm sorry. Here, this is not how we typically output um, dollars and cents this is. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> okay, so a string literal. Uh, why do we want to talk about string literals? Um, basically, a string literal is just uh, characters that are, it's, it's like this. Um, and by the way, we can hold something. So for instance, if I say, um, here, let's do this. Let me open a program here and I'll show you a way to do a what am I doing? Edit, no file. Open. So I want to go to my desktop and Python programs. And let's do, is this it? No, that's not the one I want. Let me look. Which one do I want? Is that it? Yes. Okay. So here I'm using a variable to hold a string of characters. And then I'm going to use that string variable here when I display whatever it is that I need to display. So when I run this, oops. And my first thing is the input. So I can move this over here and you can see that the first thing that I say is name because I'm doing a value assignment and I'm using the input function and in the parentheses, I'm just typing, hey, here's the question to answer. This is what we're going to use. Whatever you answer is what I'm going to use an input into the name variable. So uh, what is my name? I don't know. And then when I press enter, the next line is going to run, which is the print uh, hello name and then print welcome to Python. And so what I get is hello and then whatever I type in. So if I run it again and I type in Mary, so it's displaying a string of characters. Now the book wants to talk about Unicode and uh, how characters are held in, yeah, I know. Um, so what is the letter A? You know, the letter A is represented by eight bits and those bits are zero, one, zero, 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 one. 
I think, as long as it's a, the, what is it? Zero, one, zero, 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 one. That's eight. Yeah, there we go. So, and, and numbers. So I don't want to talk about Unicode. You can, you can um, look that up. Uh, we also have a way to control our output. Let's do, let's just do this. I'll just come back here. <clears throat> so I just want to show you that we can uh, have, there are other control characters. Uh, so uh, the one that's used most of the time is when we want to split something or we want to insert a line. So an extra line, or I want things to print not on the same line or display. I use the print function, but, um, but I want it to be, so here. So if I just do uh, print, um, oh, damn it. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Uh, hello. hello. <laughs> um, so, hello, world. The P in print capitalized. Yeah, you know what? A lot of times I do that, unfortunately. Um, it's one of those things I got to stop. Thank you for, because it would have just crashed on me. There we go. It's purple. Now I know I'm good. Now, why would I do this? So it's backslash N. And I did it wrong because I put this here first. So it's all got to go inside here. So if I press print now, what happened is that it added, a, it skipped a line, right? So now my prompt has skipped a line. Whereas normally it doesn't. You just look at, at the rest of my code here and you can see that it doesn't skip a line. So if I want to print, say, uh, Let's say I want to do one comma. And then I want to have a new line. And then I want to print two. Not period, comma. And then I want to print a new line. And then I want to print three. Let's just go with three. <laughs> so three and close my parentheses. So basically this is going to print one, two, three. That's odd. Why did it print it that way? Why is there a space there? How come you don't need um, quotations on the one, two, and threes? Um, because that's what I'm going to print. That's that it's not a string. So it's not a string variable. It's a numeric value. And so whenever I'm, and, and I'm not, I'm not referencing a variable. So this hasn't been right. I can just, and by the way, if I'm referencing a variable, I don't need them either. Um, So if I did, let's, let's, I'll, I'll give you an example. So if I create a uh, variable, I'll just create a string variable. Uh, let's create a string variable called, um, well, hell, I'll just call it Bob because I can't think of anything. And I will put, into Bob hello and then I'll create a string variable called Bob one and I'll put in there world boom and then I'm going to print, and hopefully this will work. So I'm going to print 
Bob. So that's going to do whatever is in that variable, right? And now, because this is a control character, so I do need parentheses here, but I've, I've already loaded that variable and I don't need to put uh, parentheses around it because it's not a literal. Okay, I'm just going to reference the contents of that variable. Um, so I got to do backslash in because I want to do this on a separate line. Where is it? There it is. Then comma space and then I want to do Bob one. Why is it why is it doing that? It's a little bit weird that it's adding a space there. Why is it doing that? It's because um, you put a space where the is comma it, is. Is that what it is? It's the, yeah. the space here. You, yeah. So with Bob, Bob one after the end, if you get rid of that space on the comma, it'll go. Okay. Rid. Yeah, I, th I thought that's what it might be. Um, <clears throat> so if I do, um, if I do this, and it's the second one, no, that's not it, it's the wrong space. the wrong space it's this space no is it that's it's this space right yeah no it's not that space i don't know why it's doing that it shouldn't be doing that Maybe the space the one it um when it, it's supposed to be helping you what it's <laughs> trying to do from what it appears is that when you have a literal, a string, and yeah. then the next thing coming is a number, it automatically puts a space there so the, so the operator doesn't see a, a, a literal with a number squeezed onto the end of it, so they think it's all one literal. So it yeah. automatic, that's a function that's automatic. What you'll need to do to correct that is to add a space. Add a space in front of the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd There's have to do way to correct it, but yeah. So you'd basically have to add a space like um There's a backspace char that you can insert into there that'll put yeah. the cursor backwards, but that's complicated. Yeah, so if I do this. Is that going to work? It sure shit does. <clears throat> okay, so what I did was now I created a string literal because the space is not a, a number, right? So that's why I now have quotation marks around that number one because it's no longer just the number one, it's space number one. Now I'm, I'm yeah, it's a little bit weird in why it's doing that um, is a little strange, but um, <laughs> the fix is a little bit, I don't like the fix. How's that? I don't like it. But having said that, let's, let me just show you this other bit. So um, I'm going to use the, the uh, string, some string formatting here. So I'm going to do this a lot. Uh, I, I know that we are uh, running out of time. I always seem to be rushed and running out of time. But I just want to show you something here. I always screw that up. There we go. And I did it wrong. So what did I do wrong? 
Um, hello, that's correct. Oh no, it's, it's not wrong. It's right. <clears throat> so basically what I'm doing is I've uh, adjusted the field width here which is a little bit strange to understand, but there's a field width. And so you can see, I don't know if you can see, let me do this, there we go. You can see here that there's a quotation mark displayed and right here there's a quotation mark displayed. So what I've created is I've created a field of 20 characters. And I have used this little doohickey right here. Yeah, I know we could just do a print, but um, that means that I want to left align it in that field. And so basically I just want to talk about um, formatting output here and how it changes if I, and I'm going to copy this because it makes my life easier because I can just change this doohickey here and we're going to make it uh it was a less than sign so now i'm going to go to that one greater than that should right align it so if i press enter it's right aligned in that field of 20 characters okay i'll do it one more time and we're going to center this Well, wait, yeah, I should be able to center it by doing this backspace. And then it's the thing that we do with the eyes. Um, where is that stupid character? Uh, oh, there it is. Shift six. It's that one. And I press enter and it centers it within that field. Um, That's exciting. Oh, you know what? Sometimes this actually makes sense. So if I do this, so let's say that I, I, I do this right here. So I'm gonna do a print and then I'm gonna print a, you know, I'm just doing whatever the book is, is talking about the hello world thing. So I do hello world all the time. Um, and then Period. So we can get fairly complicated here and I'll hit space and then I'll do this period. And close the parentheses and then comma. Okay, so I have now <laughs> done a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna print hello world, but so that's gonna go boom. But then I'm using this format function and what am I doing? I have a period here, right? So I'm gonna use that period and I left out, see, I always leave out something. I'm going to put that period across 30 characters, 30, um, well, screw it. It's easier to show you and then explain it. <laughs> okay. So now basically I have hello world starting on the, on the line. I have added a fill character. So a period in this case. And then I've said, okay, so it's got to be 30 characters 
So I think it's 30 characters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It's more than 30 characters in that. Um, and, and then I have the last bit. So if you want to use a fill character, this is how it works. And if I change this number, now let's see what happens when I change the number. Oh, it's 30 dots, I'm sorry. I'm specifying 30 of the periods. So here it's 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yes. And then if I do it again and I make it bigger, um, so let's say that I want to have 60. I don't know if that's too much. It is too much. It's pushing it right off the edge of the line of the line. So I have to make this wider. So basically we can use uh, fill characters and format strings this way. And we just have to do, oh, I could do this. Let's, let's do before we sign off and um, go to lab. Let me change my fill character to a dash, say. Oops. I got to change it in both spots. Ah, I can't change it because I have to do it here. So dash, dash, there we go. So now I've changed the fill character and I shouldn't have used 60 because it's too damn wide. <clears throat> okay, so having said that, um, we're out of time for lecture, as usual.